And we're back, with some more oxygen not included, and today we are most definitely, definitely, definitely finishing this rocket. But first up, we gotta do a quick little cheeky thing right here, and cool down this refined carbon really, really quickly. What we have been doing so far is we used a steam turbine to cool it down to 125 degrees. Once that had maxed out its cooling, we then dumped a bunch of salt water on top of it until the salt water stopped turning into steam. That unfortunately, maybe heated the place up a little bit, but that's fine, we can deal with that later. Now that that's all done, we are going to let that water flow out of there. Oh, yeah, some of that's still going to turn into a bit more steam. Don't worry, we can, we can cool down the rest of this place later. Then all we have to do is stick in a bit of a block, and then we are going to throw in temperature shift plates. So, we're going to grab some temperature shift plates and we're going to make them out of ice, because we have ice lying around the place. And uh, give me some regular ice. One right there, one right there, and they should immediately melt and flow down into this section. And, oh, I should probably wall this all back in again. How many grams is left? N not a lot. You know what? We'll mop that up. We'll wall it back in. And we want to keep all that ice water there so that the ice water flows down and cools down this refined carbon from 102 to hopefully something like about in the 90s. And I should be happy with that. Um, the dupes keep taking naps on the job. Come on, people. Get on with it. All right. This ice should uh, exchange temperature with the gold tile. The gold, t And then it'll just turn into water and drop right down. Now, if we didn't have this gold tile here, temperature shift plates don't exchange temperature with other temperature shift plates. They only exchange it with solid tiles, liquids, or gases. So, that's plenty of... Ch there we go. That's the cooling room. What is going on down there? Please tell me we haven't dumped a bunch of water everywhere. I don't want to contaminate the system with water. This actually weirdly helps us. I think heating up this whole area will make uh, prepping this whole system down here for the nuclear waste storage a little bit easier. So, we're not going to worry too much about that. A little bit of steam is going to get trapped in those airflow styles and maybe turned into water, but we'll worry about that later. For now, we're just going to chill this down a little bit more. Uh, some of this stuff has cooled down enough, others needs just a little scooch more ice. Ah, nice balmy 70C. That should be grand. Well, at least to start. That'll get us low enough that we don't have to worry about it cooking the whole capsule when we start pressurizing this whole system. Now, let's get in... Oh, let's build in this section over here first. If this is going to be our colonist's most awesomest rocket. It should be overseen by a Aku. And as you can see, all the duplicates are ecstatic about this new change. Yes, Aku is proud. Though, I'm glad the game actually handled knowing that the, the monument was inside the rocket. I was worried it might crash. Guys, wait. You've got frost burgers. Why are you... Oh my god, that guy's eating pickles in the corner. Stop that. Yes, yes, yes. All in, all for the glory of Aku, I understand. God, it's been a while since I've done an achievement run. Yeah, no, no, it's fine. We've got all the achievements already, we don't care. Downside of the mod that gives us the Aku Monument. And for those of you who've never seen Samurai Jack, well, I kind of envy you. You've got a whole series you can watch. Uh, there doesn't seem to be the bottom seems to not exist anymore. Whenever the game was updated, something happened, now the bottom of Aku doesn't exist, but he was the shape-shifting master, so it turns out it actually works pretty good. No matter what you do, it still looks like it's Aku there. Like, he, he, can, he can do it all. I mean, he really is the shape-shifting master, but I think if he's going to be sitting on top of a nuclear reactor, this one just seems like the best. I couldn't think of a better one than that. All right, with Aku in position, we can now seal off this side here and uh, start getting ready for final prep on activating our nuclear reactor. I think we are finally ready to just prep the reactor, and by prep I mean fire this up and get this full of a bit of steam to get everything warmed up. This is where we throw in about 10 kilos of uranium, run it, fill some water and steam in here and get everything flowing. In fact, if we're going to do it that way, we can de delete this airflow tile. Uh, we can let the nuclear waste go down here. We're not worrying about doing infinite compression just yet. We're not going to have nearly enough in uh, nuclear waste to do that, but soon. If we're firing this up, then we're going to need our uranium. Uh, time to start the harvest. Where is it? Yep, you. We're going to have to allow everyone in. And then we're going to have to enable auto harvest on all of these. There should be over a, what, 10 tons of uranium? All right, go scoop it out. Get those ice cream scoops working, dupes. Ah, beautiful. How much enriched uranium is that? 5.5 tons. There's a little bit more. It's taken a second to catch up. 10.6 tons of your enriched uranium. We're going to be able to run this rocket for a very, very long time. I bet a thousand cycles. All right, what do we got here? We got 10 kilos of enriched uranium. We're going to have that storage uh, set to priority six, and we're going to have that filled. We're just about ready to fire this up, and I think we're going to block duplicates from going in here. That way, this area is sealed off, and... Ah, damn it. I forgot to replace that with a mesh tile. The plan? Super simple. We dump 10 kgs of enriched uranium in here. 
Duplicates can't get in or out. We flick that switch, which will activate the reactor to get refueled. The auto sweeper will load it up with the 10 kilos, and then the water coming in from this liquid reservoir will start to steam up this area and start preheating everything and generating us some nuclear uh, waste that we're going to use as coolant. This is, well, we're, the reason we're only using 10 kgs is we don't want to have this running for more than a day. So we hook that up like that, and damn it, I forgot to put in an auto sweeper in there, didn't I? Very simple plan. We enable this conveyor loader, we plug it in. The 10 kilos from the storage bin is now going to get dumped into the conveyor loader. And then once that's in, that will start getting dripped down. Where is it? It's sent down here. And we're actually going to disable this thing. We don't want any more going in there. Done. And that gets sent down here. Duplicants can't get in any here anymore. And we're going to have to hook up the power. Give me a conductive wire. We're going to cook that up there. Cancel the connection. Done. And that brings power into the system. Though we have not connected up the transformers yet. We don't want those transformers generating heat because there's no atmosphere for them and they'll just end up overheating. Excellent. So we have 10 kilos of enriched uranium, which is one day's worth of this nuclear reactor working. Nope. Oh, and we want to hook up the water. So we're going to plug this in now. Now, we've got five tons of water here. And the plan is to put in about seven and a half tons. That's what we determined will keep the system running well. So that is... Ooh, that is filled up the nuclear reactor nicely. And then we enable this switch. The switch lets the reactor get fueled up, and boom, 10 kilos of enriched uranium go in there. This thing's going to turn on, last for exactly 600 seconds, or one cycle, and then by the time it's done, this area should be, well, even warmer than it currently is, and we should have ourselves some uh, radioactive waste that we can use to fill in a few bits and bobs here and there and set up our system properly. And there you can see all that steam, that's also one of the problems we're going to face. Uh, we'll let it run for a day and see how she's doing. Unfortunately, I forgot to prep this with some nuclear waste beforehand. We need to put a blob of nuclear waste there to stop the stuff disappearing. We can fix that, but we will have to wait until the reactor switches off, which will... Well, that's going to be a little while. we got about 2.8 kilos left, but once that's expired, we can start putting some nuclear waste down there. There's a, I've practiced this in debug mode, and all we have to do is mop up a, a blob of it, and then dump the blob down there. After running with 10 kilos of uranium in there, we've got this place a little bit warmer. I think we can actually run it again, and how much water did we burn on that? Not a lot. we got to put in... Well, once these 5 tons go in, we got to put another 2.5 tons after that. Due to the construction methodology, uh, duplicants can walk in here, pass through this manual airlock, get down there, and mop that section. Then we're going to get them to bring that mop nuclear waste and drop it off down here. In its container. We're not actually going to get them to pour it down. Ah, uh, come in. There you go. Then we can get that nuclear waste, use the move to command, and drop it right there. Otherwise, we would we could have used, well, ripped out the thermal aqua tuner, and then we could have put it down there using a drop-off thing, like a pitcher pump or something like that. But we're not going to need to do that in this instance, I believe. Oh... Agree. Someone just fueled the reactor because I forgot to turn off the switch. Oh, agree. Okay, someone's going to have to get a little bit of radiation poisoning. Sorry about this. Oh. Actually. That shuts off the nuclear reactor, does it? Or does that actually... Wait, no. I think if you leave that like that, it causes the whole thing to overheat and explode. Uh, how many rads have you been exposed to, Skinny? You're probably not looking too healthy. That's, um... 176. Okay. We need to maybe make you some rad pills. Yep, yep, I'm thinking rad pills are probably a plan that we're going to need. Do we have anyone who's trained as an apothecary? Excellent. Apothecary, ready. Uh, basic rad pill. Let's, uh, let's do up about ten of those. I don't think we need them, but that's fine. And consumables. Let's go find the duplicate that has the green face. Yeah, skinny. Uh, sorry about that, buddy. Did not mean to irradiate the bejesus out of you. Basic rad pill. Yes, there you go. You'll be the only one on it because everyone else didn't run into the middle of a nuclear reactor. How you feeling? Uh, I think they went to the bathroom already and dropped 100 rads. Once we can get them a uh, an anti-rad pill, that'll drop them by another 80 by the end of the cycle, I think it is, or is it 100? Skinny here should immediately go and grab a rad pill. Come on. Perfect, your rads are... you're losing zero a cycle. Now you're losing 100. Excellent. That means once you go to the bathroom later today, you will be sorted. Now, let's maybe try and keep you away from rads for a while. Hopefully keep you nice and safe. Now, down here, let's 
see. There's the nuclear waste. There's 112 kilos of it. And since it's in one of those nuclear waste containers, after a while it just breaks out of it. I think it's once every cycle or so. So let's see if that nuclear waste falls on the ground. Actually, wait. There already is. There's a bunch of nuclear waste on the ground already. Perfect. So you can kind of see the green outline. We put down two blobs. There was uh, one here, and then there was one from when we dis dis uh, dismantled the nuclear reactor. That means any nuclear waste that flows down here will land in the section and spread out. Because of the way the rockets are designed, you're not supposed to be able to get outside them, and when you plug in toilets to them, the liquid falls down and disappears when it hits the bottom of the map. So we needed to not have drops hitting the bottom of the map. We need another liquid to be there already, and to move that liquid there is actually a bit of a problem, so we're moving it down manually. That allows us to do this. Otherwise, you could just move these down. In fact, we could uh, empty these now. And that will get spread out. Though I don't think we really need a duplicate in there to do that. So let's uh, cancel the empty. And instead, let's uh, replace the nuclear reactor and get ready to run this for another little bit. Another quick 10 kilos of uh, enriched uranium. That should keep it going for another day. We'll do a little bit more warning, get warming, get ourselves some more nuclear waste. And if we check under liquids down here, we can see there is actually a bunch of nuclear waste. Excellent. That should keep filling up there, and then once we've got enough nuclear waste, we can start filling our cooling loop, and then we can actually leave this reactor on for more than, you know, one day at a time. I have been drip-feeding this 10 kgs at a time while I figure out the mistakes I'm making. There, there are many. Uh, first one was, I hadn't actually put in a backing tile here, so we lost a bunch of steam to the background of state space, but we fixed that. Uh, we got the nuclear waste fixed at the bottom. I accidentally filled this up a second time with about 160 kilos of enriched uranium, but we dismantled it again. Duplicates got less radio radiation poisoning. This time, we're doing it right again, and we're slowly but surely getting ourselves a bunch of radioactive waste down here. We haven't quite hit level, like, two layers up, but that's fine. At some point, we're going to have to replace the gases in here with oxygen and carbon dioxide. We're prepped for that, but I think what we can do is we can remove the backing plates to let the gases that are in there escape, and then replace them with carbon dioxide and oxygen. I don't think they'll overwrite if we replace them. Uh, all right, we'll worry about that in a minute. For now, we're just making sure that this place is all tippity-top in terms of uh, heat. It's pushing back all the layers of steam there, and I think I think it's getting to about operating temperature. We don't want it to go above 275. Uh, I was pointing to the uh, thermal aqua tuner last time I was doing the prep in the debug mode. This thing is actually overheats at 325 degrees, so we're fine actually in the aqua tuner. The problem would be the liquid steel pump is 275, the auto sweepers are 275, the transformers, everything else that's not the acronym will overheat at 275 degrees. So we got to be a little bit careful here and not go too hot. This stuff is coming out at 300 degrees. The water, so we need to, well, the water and the nuclear waste, so we need to make sure we're uh, spreading it out, so to speak, or making sure this place doesn't get too hot. If we desperately need more water cooling, what I do is I just hook up this liquid tank to uh, the output port. Let me see if we do something like that. This causes a bunch of liquid to flow into the system. This is just a, a safety feature, and it's also necessary for a few other things, but that's a safety feature we've got for now that allows us to dump in some extra water if we need a bunch of emergency cooling. Or we can just turn on the steam turbines. Though they have a limited amount of cooling available to them because we haven't actually set up their cooling loops yet. But soon, once we have enough radioactive waste or nuclear waste, we can set up their cooling loops. I think it's time to hook up the cooling loop. The cooling loop is going to be filled with this radioactive waste we've got down here because, well, it's better than super... Well, not as good as super coolant, but it's better than everything else we've got right now. Uh, to do that, we're going to activate this pump. Pressure's below. Uh, excellent. That activates the pump. Pump's going to start pumping out that radioactive nuclear waste. The nuclear waste is going to go out here and start filling up the loop. Why are you... Wow, you're splitting up like crazy. That is... You know what? We'll, we'll start filling it and worrying about it later. That is... Are you... Oh man, I'm going to have to delete that, aren't I? Never mind, never mind. We can fill this up and then we can sort out the mess in a minute. No problems, no problems at all. So it turns out I'm a bit of a muppet. I put in the aqua tuner backwards and I put in this liquid bridge backwards. But I suppose we already knew I was a bit of a muppet for these things. All right, uh, let's see if we can replace this without having to do a whole bunch of major reconstructive surgery. I would prefer not to. But we are going to end up with something down there that we can't sweep. Which will annoy some people, so we'll just uh, pretend it doesn't exist. And the, everyone will be so much happier. You, uh, we want to flip you around. There we go. We'll rotate you back into position, then we'll sweep up the junk down there. God, that was so dumb. How did I mess this up? Oh, oh yeah, this thing is a stupidly overcomplicated rocket. We should have made things a lot simpler, but we wanted to be able to fit our coup in. And if we wanted to fit our coup in, we had to, like, compress things just a little bit. One thing we face with this is the pipe's going to be blocked because we've overfilled the loop. To combat that, we have this little contraption thing up here. We basically throw on some pipes, cut that off, and... Oh, cut you off as well. Now we need to get rid of one more blob, I think. You 
Can connect there. One second. Yep, three blobs. Three blobs should be plenty. Excellent. And now the cooling can begin. This thing has to cool things below... Well, once we get it below 100, once we get the nuclear waste below 100, we should be able to start cooling the steam turbines properly. And once they're below that, we don't have to worry too much. We can sort of ramp things up. This is up to 90 degrees in here. Well, that's okay. Getting a little bit warm. We don't have, we don't have to worry if it goes about 275, but because of our prep work, we can simply do that. One second. Cancel. And this allows us to dump a bunch of water down here. We still have oh, almost four tons of water we have to feed into the system at one point or another, so dumping it in now to provide a bit of cooling. Easy peasy. Once the, uh, the nuclear waste is down to the prerequisite cooling level, we can kick back in. Look how rapidly that temperature is falling. This is in no time at all. Uh, we were having problems before in the debug. When we were doing this in the debug mode, it took forever for the steam for the the nuclear waste to cool down in the pipes. Namely because the nuclear reactor was on, it was dumping loads of heat into the system. The steam turbines were trying to just delete all that heat, which causes them to generate heat, which means the nuclear waste had to cool all the turbines, and we're only having just a little scooch more cooling than that, so it took ages to drag them down. But now we can plummet down to the necessary level, as well as that we're going to extend this cooling loop on. We're going to run this through the entire rocket. Now, it will be a bit warm. 45 degrees means the plants we're going to be planting here won't work. Well, not at first. Until we get super coolant to replace them. But it, we're planning ahead here for when we get super coolant, which this rocket can do. It can basically move to other planets, grab what we need, and then bring it back. The next cooling loop we need to fill is the fridge loop. We want to have a, a nice frozen section over here where we can store food. Now, we could try going with berry sludge and have made berry sludge farms and all that, but... Nah, it's just actually easier because we have the power and the space to chuck this in. I mean, think about it. All we need to do is put in this down here, which is space that was already free. We make a freezer over here, which takes up one, two, three tiles. Right? Okay, technically four because we've got this radioactive thing below it, but not really. That's really just three tiles, and we have deep freeze storage that will allow us to preserve any food type, which really opens up avenues for us, which allows us to have the vol pups in here, or the voles in here, providing us food, which means we're saving more space because we're able to stick it in here in the reactor where we're not going to have duplicates running around anyway. I think this whole thing saves us a bunch of space. However, before we fill this uh, with the hydrogen cooling loop, we're going to need to do a few things. One, I would like to hook up the power grid. You see, right now, this power grid is running off a, a 2 kilowatt wire. Now, it's plugged into our main power spine that's going to be running off the nuclear reactor and the steam turbines and all that stuff. But... I would like to plug us into the main grid and start running our power off of the transformers we've got installed in here. So to do that, we're going to plug in the power over here. So we're going to connect up on this section. That will require us to wire a few things with uh, the regular wire. But before we do that, I want to make some changes down here to our gas pumps. I'm basically chopping this part off here. There's a big blob of molten obsidian that we've been slowly draining the heat out of. And now that it's almost all gone, I say we move the gas pumps down a bit. They're a little bit too close to the steam up there, and I don't want them, you know, sucking up the odd packet of steam and causing breakages in the pipes. So we've moved the gas pumps down, we've extended on the automation, we've extended on the power lines, we've extended on the gas. You keep forgetting just how many little bits and bobs there is to even a single construction project. And I think, actually, we can start deleting this stuff now. You can all go... And we'll stick in the gas pumps down here where they're nice and out of the way and no steam should ever get anywhere close to them. Finished. That was preying on my mind. It was just, it was very not neat and it needed to be fixed at some point. There's a volcano behind that. I'm not sure I really want to open that. Surrounded by carbon dioxide, I don't think we'd be able to provide enough cooling to keep that going. Maybe experiment with that later, after we get the rocket finished. Now, rocket, where was it? Ah, yes, we wanted to set this up so we were drawing power from the large power. Ooh. Actually, wait, there was one thing. Over here, we have a hot tub. This is uh, over near the Gravitas shipping container. This was one of those buildings that just got left around. Does this leave us wood? If this left us wood, it would be nice, because we could use that wood to make a hot tub somewhere else. And no. Sedimentary rock and copper. Well, that was unfortunate. See, hot tubs require uh, 200 kgs of wood. If that's the case, then we're going to have to get wood another way. Where did we put our poke shells? So I'm saying what we do is we grab some poke shells, we wrangle them all. We don't want them smacking us when we go into the room. Then we've unlocked the door so that our duplicates can get in there, and they're going to start transferring them over here. Then when they come over here, they can pop through this critter fluxomatic thingy. And unfortunately we end up with a sunny shell. I was really hoping for a different one. But don't worry, this thing will recharge and then we'll get another attempt. Number two. Come on, number two. Give us a wood shell. Whatever you call Yes, oak shells. Perfect. 
So this fella here will molt and leave behind some lumber that we can use. Uh, I don't even know how long it takes them to molt, and honestly, I don't care. We could try taming them and feeding them polluted dirt, but that's an awful lot of effort. Instead, we'll just wrangle them up and dump them in a ranch somewhere. While we attempt to churn out more of those oak shells so that we can get the necessary wood to make the saunas and things we want, uh, we're going to go in here and we're going to prime this loop. First off, we've rejigged the power. We now have mains power coming in, as in we have this big heavy watt wire that is connected to the outside of the ship onto our main power grid, which we ran up to the rocket. This is going to power these transformers. Actually, connected, boom, and that provides power to these two separate grids. Uh, we still have to finish off a few things here and there, uh, disable that building. I don't want them using the toilets in here just yet for obvious reasons. And then we're going to want to power that telescope as well. We want this rocket to be able to explore as it goes. And now we need to stick in the hydrogen cooling loop right here. So we've got this coming in here. It goes down to this section. It goes through here, pops out the other side. We just need to bring in that hydrogen from somewhere else on the map. And that somewhere is all the way over here. The uh, the old flooded electrolyzer setup we have. There is this down here. That's going to provide us a bunch of hydrogen. That hydrogen is going to flow all the way to the top of the map. In fact, I think we can cut this off. Why are you stopped? Oh, yeah. We'll hook you up there. Then you're going to go all the way up, across, and into the rocket. Yes, I may have done a tiny scooch of prep work in the background. In fact, there's there's normally like a few pieces of background stuff you got to get prepped beforehand. In fact, we can put in a little bit extra hydrogen. We don't need to under-prepare here. We'll put in lots. And if there's too much, which, yeah, okay, there's definitely too much there. What we can do is just vent it into the background of space in the rocket. The rocket won't care. It's got plenty of vacuuming potential right now. Here she comes now. And... Start the cooling, if you wouldn't mind. We're going to try not to overfill this, but of course we will, and then we can just vent out one tile when we're done. I think we are finished. All right, we'll deconstruct that, then we can dump the rest of the hydrogen back out into space. That gets rid of the feeder, then we dump that out that direction, and finished. Next up, though, we need to do one other thing. We need to fill in these sections here. We want to put in two separate gases here, so that when radioactive waste comes down, it's forced down and we can do some infinite liquid storage. However, currently it's full of steam and more steam, so we need to get rid of that steam. Easiest thing to do, uh, get the background plates and deconstruct them. Yep. In fact, let's just go with background buildings. Done. So once these two are deconstructed, the gas will not escape into the background of space. You see, for some strange reason, if you put in a backing plate and leave it there, well, if you put in a back backing plate, reload the game, and then afterwards you remove the backing plate, it, the game still thinks there's always a backing plate there, and the gas never escapes. So that gas is just going to stay there. But once we reload the game, uh, the game will realize, hey, wait, there's supposed to be a backing plate there, at which point it will go, oh, um, and it will stop. Realizing, it'll stop, re it'll realize that there's no backing plate there, and it'll realize, oh my god, I'm explaining this terribly, aren't I? Apologies. I was over at a friend's house. The friend has kids. Those kids have germs. I have been exposed to child germs, and now I feel like death. It's, um, yeah, it's affecting my ability to explain and think difficultly. I can't believe I said think difficulty. Okay, my brain's not working at 100%, so my explanations may be a little bit muddled today. I apologize. I, I blame my friend's kids, which is not fair, but it's still technically their fault. All right, I'm going to save the game and reload it, and then that steam should vanish. After a quick save reload, you can see here, like, it even hasn't detected that there's power on the grid yet. You'll see there's 26.9 kgs of steam in each one of those tiles, and if we slowly play it forward, 26.8, 26.76, and it's slowly going down. It's going to take a little bit of time, but once those kilos of pressure are gone, we can put backing plates in there again. And we can put backing plates in there again, and then we can dump off one blob of oxygen and one blob of carbon dioxide. We even have some piping ready to go, and I've got blobs of carbon dioxide and oxygen ready to go. Oh, and I forgot to... Uh, I made some mistakes here. I should have actually had this continuously rotating, because right now it stopped in the pipes, because I never put in a consistent rotation system. There we go. That should keep it moving. Much better. There'll be the odd break in the pipe, but honestly, the amount of cooling required here is minuscule, so shouldn't be an issue. All right, now you're looking over there. That is 16 kilos. All right, we'll cut back in once the, the gases are gone. We've replaced the backing plates with temperature shift plates made of cobalt, because I really think I should have been using that stuff more. We have plenty of cobalt lying around the place. Its thermal conductivity is amazing. Its melting point is great. Probably should have built the whole background here out of it, just so that we could drain the heat out of the nuclear waste. But uh, that's one of those I should have, should have, could have, would have. Now, we want to put in two blobs. One blob of, say, oxygen right about there, one blob of carbon dioxide right about there. And thinking about it, I probably could have just gotten away with 
leaving one of the blobs of steam in there and putting in a blob of carbon dioxide. But this is how I did it in testing was oxygen and carbon dioxide. So I'd prefer to stick with that just to be absolutely certain. Oh, hey, it's another oak shell. One second, I gotta move this guy. I have to follow all of these because if they drop the oak shell inside the steam room, it will die from the heat. And if they don't drop it where we want it, we could have more problems. All right, now, these guys will only drop oak as far as I'm aware once they're dead. Uh, uh, I think they can molt multiple times if we tame them, but I'm not willing to tame them. So we're just going to have to wait till some of them die. Uh, how many more we got to go? Oh, two more. This is going to take forever. The oxygen for this setup we just grabbed from over here. We literally just chucked in a gas pump, pumped a little bit of oxygen into the pipes, and then we siphoned the pipe on. We're going to do the exact same thing here. We just grabbed some carbon dioxide that used to be going to a carbon dioxide engine, siphoned off a little bit, uh, that kilo can go down there and start heading into the rocket. And inside the rocket, it's going to come down here and get siphoned into this section. Now, you can't really see what's going on here, but this comes down here and bridges across onto one pipe segment. Now, the reason we use the bridges is it forces the gas to go that direction. If there was no bridges, it wouldn't flow to the end of the pipe. So that's why we have the bridge there. So that floats all the way to the end. And then what we can do is just grab the bridge. Damn it, there's too many bridges. I'll wait until the carbon dioxide is in as well, I think. Then we'll deconstruct both the bridges and we should be left with two pipe segments, each with a little blob of carbon dioxide and oxygen in them, respectively. And done. So we'll get rid of all of you, all of you. You can all go, all of you, all the way back. And also that gas bridge. Yep, they're all going, perfect. The only thing that should be left behind is that gas pipe. Yeah, two gas pipes and everything else should go. And just about done. Excellent. Oh, I put in a backing plate there. I think I leaked more steam into the background of space. I am probably going to have to dump some more water into this reactor to make it work right. But that, that we can worry about in a little bit. For now, what we want to do is we want to deconstruct those gas pipes. So if we deconstruct both of those, we should be left with one blob of carbon dioxide. Let's go to gases. One blob of carbon dioxide and one blob of oxygen. Oxygen on top, carbon dioxide on the bottom. There we go, one kilo of carbon dioxide, one kilo of oxygen. And because of the way mechanics work, any liquids that fall down here will get forced down here and they won't be able to get back up again and it should give us infinite liquid storage. Right, that was difficult, but it's done. The reactor is pretty much functional and we can get on with our day. We're gonna do one last test run here of the reactor. We're just giving it 10 kilos of enriched uranium again. And the last problem I observed was here. And when we were making this uh, refined carbon cap, we put down this one first. Unfortunately, the top refined carbon kind of merged into the bottom, leaving there's only 1,090 kilos here. This only has a radiation blocking of 57%. Plastic has 68%. I think, I think we have to replace that with plastic. Yep, that's unfortunate, but it'll give us better radiation blocking than we're currently experiencing. Look at that, 1,000 rads, 971. Ugh. Yeah, we need to get rid of that. We can't allow that to continue. Also, we'll put that there to block any rads escaping at that section. And as you can see, I don't particularly like the amount of rads we're getting exposed to here either, but we don't really have much choice. Well, we will when we wall that off. When we wall that off, it'll make it a, a little bit more habitable over here, but it's still not going to make it great. This is probably as good as we're going to be able to make it. Uh, let's see. You. Ugh. Please tell me you're not standing directly in the path. Yeah, you're fine. Nice. Uh, let's reduce the rads a bit. We put a second blob there of plastic, and that should stop it even more. And that, that's 246 rads. Reduced to 201. Not amazing. Not amazing. Ooh, how is there 574 rads there? It makes no sense. Right, we'll put that there. That there. Let me just maybe place some plastic tiles to help this along. Turns out putting extra plastic tiles there helped reduce the radiation. Over you know what? It's fine. It's fine. The amount of radiation around here is... Not great, not terrible. We'll uh, maybe stick in a tile or two here and there just to help out, but I think, I think that's enough. Yeah, that should be everything we need to keep the reactor running. Once we turn this on again and next time, it's staying on permanently. There'll be no turning it off, so we gotta make sure all our ducks are in a row or we're gonna have serious problems. I think we can finish walling all of this place in with pixel packs. We may be a tiny scoot short on glass. That's okay, I've queued up another 99 occurrences of it. What we're going to do here, though, is set up our electrolyzer. We're going to make a submerged electrolyzer so we can produce 8.8 .8 kilos of, or 888 grams of oxygen per second, which should be enough to support eight duplicates. 
Uh, well, a little bit over eight, but I'm thinking we can stick eight duplicates into this rocket. That's why I stuck in the extra couple atmosphere suits. Originally, we were going to go with six, but we can kind of fit in eight and still have a decent rocket, so why not go for it? Hey, first off, though, let's get some... Yeah, how much water are you going to put in there? We want... That's 200 kilos of salt water. We're going to want about, say, 10 kilos on the bottom. Actually, let's make that 15. Perfect. That is plenty. Stuff. Then we're going to want to throw some regular water right there on top of that. Uh, they should wh wick away the, uh, the old salt water bottle. We have some places where that needs to go. And if we check here under liquids... Come on. Yeah, there we go. It's submerged at the bottom. We'll submerge it across the top as well, and we should be good to go. And then we drop down about two kilos of water on top there. I would prefer if it was slightly less, to be honest. But there, we've got a submerged electrolyzer. Oh god, I hope this works when we turn it on. Now get, get, not gonna worry about it for now. We're gonna clean this place up. If we have to break back in here and fix this, I am willing to live with that mistake. But for now, we're gonna sort this out. It's time to see if we've prepped this thing correctly. Now, what we want to do is have the hydrogen float up here, the oxygen float out to the side, and these two gas pumps can pump it around our base. However, you're supposed to prep it by putting hydrogen in here and oxygen in there. We're just going to put in one of them. Uh, hopefully it works. Uh, you. Yes, you. We are going to deconstruct you. And we're going to queue up two tiles to go in there as well. So that should deconstruct that tile, that or that uh, gas pipe. That gas pipe contains oxygen. The oxygen should spread out a bit, but before it gets a chance to completely dissipate... Someone go grab that. Oh. God. Damn it. Why are you guys even on? I should have cut the power to you, shouldn't I? Yep, we should cut the power to you to stop you doing dumb stuff like that. Please tell me you didn't vacuum the place out already, and you totally have, haven't you? No, there's, there's like a few little milligrams of gas in there. If you guys could wall that in super quick, that would be really nice. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And... There you go. It's stabilized. So now in theory, when we turn this on, the oxygen should get shunted over there, the hydrogen should get forced out the top. Of course, that's just a theory. Let's uh, find out what happens when we actually hook it up. Uh, you. Come on. Give me one blob of water. We just want one. And let's check the gas overlays. Hey! It's actually working. We're getting oxygen that side, hydrogen at the top. I don't know if we got lucky there or not. I was advised that you had to do the hydrogen, not the oxygen, but uh, whatever, 50-50 chance. So, uh, let's let that maybe fill up a little bit more. We can we can afford to have some more oxygen pressure and some more hydrogen pressure. Nice. Well, that's one part of our system functional. We just got to finish off some pixel packs and a few little bits and bobs. Oh, and please tell me those poke shells have died of old age. If we go back to our base, where are you? Yeah, I think, I'm pretty sure a poke shell has died somewhere. And if that's the case, then they should have dropped some wood, which we can then smash up in here. Ah! Oak shell, molt to lumber. We shall make that a forever thing, and that should give us a bunch of lumber to work with. Come on, where are you? Yep, here they go. Perfect. Now, this should give us the wood we need to put in some of our final little accoutrements. Ah, uh, how we got? 500 lumber? Yes, please. Thank you very much. Now, in here, we want to go into furniture. Uh, now, this here is the Great Hall. Well, actually, it's the Mess Hall. We need to put it in a recreational building. Or a recreational building, we're gonna go with a hot tub. Uh, now, we could have went... What just happened? Where did my wood go? Came back. I think someone was storing the wood. But we have to make this out of steel, though. If we don't make this out of steel, we're gonna end up with problems. This thing overheats at 37.7C. Our capsule is going to be like about 45, maybe 50 C for a long time. So the steel helps counteract that. And ah, oh, damn it. Yep. Uh, so we're going to have to remove some of the pixel packs here. I was afraid of that. Yeah, we'll have to see if we can't fit them back in again. But that's okay. That's okay. We'll just have to do some more Lego moving about with these things. Uh, oh, great. Well, once we get enough glass. I think now is the time to start pressurizing. We have um, a lot of backing plates in. And I think none of the gases are going to escape. I think. Pretty sure. But the problem is there's a lot of tiles. So what I've done is I've connected up these gas pumps here. They should now start dumping gases in. And if we check the gas... Wow, that spread pretty fast. As you can see, the gas pressure is spreading out. Now, down here, we've put in a liquid lock. This is going to be where we store stuff. Probably hot, uncomfortable stuff. May have to swap out that plastic at some point. Not going to worry about it for now. For now, we're going to see about pressurizing this whole rocket and seeing what happens when we do that. Temperature-wise, yeah, well, everything's going to be about 40 degrees or so. 
What's their, uh, what's their cooling loop looking like? 41. Alright, so everything should settle out about 42 degrees or so. It is done! The pixel packs are all installed. And they're all green. We've got nice green, everything's green across, all across the board. That's, that's, the only reason I did that is so that I could say everything's green all across the board. Except for, of course, these parts here where we couldn't fit one in, and there's actually some uh, pastel purples behind there as well. I think they were the only two patches I missed, and down here is actually intentionally a vacuum so that we can put stuff in here and off-gas it if we want to. So, yeah, that, uh, that worked out. I like the pixel packs in there. If I had actually spent more time, I'm sure I could have figured out a way to maybe patch up some of those places, maybe, but no, I was not wasting any more time. This rocket is taking far too long as it is. Now you, we want you to bring in, actually, wait, we'll do it up here first. For critters, we want you to grab us a pip squeak. Uh, actually, grab us a pip. We'll dump the pip in there. That pip, is there, yep. Alexander's currently on that. I should probably make sure they arrive with it on time. Pip acquired. Now what we'll do is we'll get rid of that storage bin. Uh, wow, did you plant that seed already? That was actually... And then someone can just de deconstruct that now as well. Right. That was uh, super fast. Then we'll plant one here, here, and all the way along. Should be... Nope. Damn it. I forgot how ooh, mobile those things are. Um, hmm. you know what? Let's let, let's start finishing out down here as well. I think we're going to seal this off and build in the last of the steam turbines. We have this completely submerged in nuclear waste, and if my info is correct, this thing can't get any more you know, uh, oh, caustic nuclear waste damage because it's completely submerged. Because it's completely submerged, no more damage, in theory. We'll find out because we're about to brick this off and we won't be coming back in again. Uh, give me some obsidian. Yeah, we'll be putting one block there, then another block there. Finished. We have sealed this sucker off. Actually, let's uh, just wall that in to be extra safe. Oh, and you can go. We're going to activate this reactor for 10 whole days, just to make sure everything's fine. This gives us a little bit of time to uh, turn things off if we want to. All right, that's uh, 100 kilos of enriched uranium. All of that's heading down there. You know what? Uh, let's get rid of that. Boom. And it's all ready to be loaded up. Hey, let's fire this sucker up. Red alert, people. <laughs> I didn't do it just for the green. We now have to get to switch to red alert. I love that. All systems green? Red alert. Perfect. I Yes, there is absolutely no productive reason for that. I just enjoy it. Now, that turns that on. We'll turn off feeding it for now. Uh, I've got an extra five tons of water I'm throwing in because I'm pretty sure we lost lots and lots of water to the background of space at some point because these things at the end are not kicking in. Oh, that reminds me we should uh, hook these all back up again. I disconnected a bunch of them so that I could fine-tune where the steam is going and make a few changes here and there, but now all connected. Done. All right then. Now there's a couple of things we should also probably hook up. Well, once the... What's missing? Why are you not flowing? I'll have to redo the piping a bit here, but we should be ready to activate a couple of our other systems as well. We've got oxygen, we've got power, uh, we've also shortly going to have... Here's it. Ah, yes, you. Cancel that. We are going to have this water come up here and enter into the hot tub. Now, we don't have bleach stone for that yet, but we can source bleach stone. Uh, dun, 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 and... Sort it. We now have... A hot tub up and running. And on top of that, that sends water over here, so we have the bathroom, the hot tub, and then we just need to kick online the sauna. Now, the sauna is no problem, that's going to be provided by steam from down here. We haven't turned that on yet because we need this flowing constantly, otherwise the ceramic pipes will eventually cause the steam inside it to condense and cause problems. But, finished! I think we now have a fully operational rocket. Just gotta give it 10 cycles, make sure the radiation or the, the nuclear waste compression is working. I think we've got a fully functional Aku rocket. Well, it seems to be working. We got our hands on some bleach stone by digging it up, and the duplicates are enjoying the hot tub. I think this is a, a rather successful sign. In fact, I think we can downgrade from red alert to green alert. Perfect. Uh, reactor is running. I did have to... This down here is just weird. I tried bridging on and off water, but it kept jamming up the steam turbine. So eventually what I've done is the output of the steam turbine comes up. It preferentially fills up the hot tub and the toilet. And if both of those are full, it then goes right back down and gets fed in along here, which then gets fed into the reactor. 
Uh, steam turbine wise, yeah, that's not quite up to spec. What are we looking at here? Pressure is 28, 29 kilos. I think we're actually, maybe we are. 32 there. Over here, we're looking at about 70 kilos. I think that's enough water. In that case, we can cut you off. Okay, one downside here. The output water from the toilet is going to go across here, down here, and get fed into back into the system. That way it gets turned from polluted water back into clean water, and then we can use that clean water to run back into the toilets. However, this will generate more water than it uses, so eventually this place would overpressurize. However, considering the size of this, the amount of what pressure, steam pressure it would take, I mean, you'd be looking at many, many, many thousands of cycles, hopefully. And we can siphon out the water if we need to. Oh. Uh, just get rid of that. Soon that pip will plant that last tile. And we're missing one thing here. Ah, yes, that was it. By sticking in a park sign there, we have four plants in this section. And nature reserve. Yay, plus six morale. The electric grill doesn't count, and neither does the auto sweeper. They don't interfere. Well, the conveyor loader would, but that's why we put the conveyor loader behind that door. That way, the conveyor loader, well, all the food that drops down here can get fed into the electric grill, and any output from the electric grill gets fed into the conveyor loader. And uh, the output is coming from down here. Any meat, any uh, any meat or eggshells gets dumped up here. Boom. That picks them up, they get grilled up and turned into barbecue, and then that barbecue gets sent down here across and into cold storage. However, we're going to fill that cold storage immediately with something else. Namely, well, where are we? Frost burgers. In fact... Let's use the move command. There's this new move command they introduced in the newest patch. And here comes a whole bunch of frost burgers and a whole bunch of surf and turf. All of which is going to get dumped into... Oh, wrong button. Into the conveyor loader and sent down and across here to our deep freeze. Go on, go on, go on. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. That gives us access to quite a bit of calories in here and we can store this stuff forever and ever and ever. And what do we got? We got Surf and Scurf. Two and a half million calories. It is deep frozen. It will never go off so long as we leave it in here. Now to access it, all we're going to do is check this fridge, put it to about one kilo, and put in one kilo of whichever food we'd prefer. Either the Surf and Turf, if we're looking for... Or sorry, the Frost Burgers, if we're looking to keep them happy. The Surf are de-stressed, and the Surf and Turf, if you want to keep them unradiated. I mean, the radiation's not that bad here. Even in the sleeping area, it's less than 80. It's 76 rads up there, though it will keep all of the food nice and clean, which is nice to know. And how's that looking? Yeah, it's grand. They could walk it off. The reed fiber over here, once we get super coolant, will allow us to hopefully be self-contained. As in, as we fly around, we can harvest the reed fiber and use that to help supplement our suit repair so that we can keep our Atmos suits running all the way along. Uh, at the same time, I should probably get that pip out of there so it stops eating them. We're going to have a bunch of automatic dispensers to store stuff in, a few storage bins around the place, and when it comes to the room-wise, we have a barracks, a nature reserve, a washroom, a great hall, and a park. And the reason for the park is more, well, we wanted more of these uh, reed fibers growing somewhere, and throwing them in here seemed reasonable because we had no other use for this room space. We could put in a fourth plant somewhere, but that was actually really awkward considering the way it was designed. So you know what? Nature reserve up here, if they miss that one day, they can go down and get the, just the regular park to the next. And I think that, that's that. We're ready to start rocking and rolling. It's time to get off this planet. But I'm afraid that's going to have to wait till the next episode. Uh, I've also got to collect a little bit more rad bolts. In fact, I think we're going to be pumping some of that radioactive waste out of the rocket to dump into some radiation generation so that we can get off the planet just that little bit faster. Anyway, I am going to cut this out here. I uh, hope you've enjoyed and good luck.